Hello again. Uh, the purpose of this video is to give you a little bit of help with part two of our mass spectrometry lab. So in part one, uh, what you did yesterday was to read through our scientific article on gas chromatography mass spectrometry and really just kind of learn about some general facts about that, uh, GC and MS. In part two, we're actually going to take a look at a gas chromatogram and a mass spectrometer, or I really should say a mass spectrum. So open up copy of PNC Lab Part 2A, and let's just kind of make some sense of these graphs. So when we open it up, it told us that the top graph is our GC graph. So let me zoom out a little bit. So this top graph is GC. And notice as we look at it, kind of the left side or really I should say our y-axis is count or intensity. And for ga gas chromatography, our x-axis is minutes. Because remember, our x-axis is retention time. Remember, that tells us how long it takes for our substance to go through the column. For our mass spec graph, spectrum is the second one down. You notice our y-axis, again, is kind of intensity or count. And our x-axis is, we call it mass per charge, but really we can just think of it as mass. And another thing that we should know as we look at these, the substance is at the top. So up there, sample oxycodone. So page one, we have our GC and MS of oxycodone. Okay, let me flip back to our directions here. So we kind of ran through all that. So I kind of told you, um, measurements on each axis. So let's look at our first graph again. So again, remember our first graph is the gas chromatogram. Y is count or intensity, and X is minutes. Remember, this is our gas chromatogram. And then under that, we have our mass spectrum data. Again, Y we could think of as count or intensity, or even abundance even. And X is its mass over charge, but really let's just think of the X axis as mass. So again, and that's how it is for all of these. When I go to my next, my second page, now I'm looking at the chromatogram and my spectrum for amphetamine, where again, same thing. Count on the Y, and then my X is minutes. For my chromatogram and each peak represents a substance coming out and we might see we really should see one big peak here for our chromatogram that's going to represent the substance and then these tiny other little peaks they might represent filler or some additives or really impurities and then our second graph again is our spectrum and again abundance on y Think of our x-axis as the mass for our spectrum, where each peak, again, represents um, and in a couple ways we can think about this. Uh, the highest peak is our compound or molecule altogether, and then kind of what happens in a mass spectrometer is our compound is going to be fractured into smaller parts, and so we get smaller pieces of it at these different sizes. But not that you need to know that. Just, ref just you should know that each compound is going to have its own unique series of peaks with different masses on our spectrum. Okay, back to our questions. Again, kind of did the same thing again. Kind of did the same thing that on our gas chromatogram, the peaks represent how long it takes for the compound to get through. So going back to oxycodon, again, big peak would be oxycodon. The little peaks are probably our impurities or things that have been added to the drug. So we have our five different knowns. So what you should go through is kind of record the, the most important peaks here. So let me maybe do oxycodone here. So first peak time, that would be my spectrum. And so what I would actually look at is the big peak only for this one. And we've got to estimate here. It's hard to read. I'd put it like right at maybe 23 minutes is where we have our big peak. So what I would write in here would be 23 minutes, just the one. 
And then as far as the peak heights for oxycodone. Oh, geez. Okay, we have a number here. We have 70, it looks like. 230, so I'm going to write those down. So we have a peak at 70. 230. And what? 315, 316, and 317. So I'd go 315. 316, 317. And as we kind of said earlier, each compound is going to have unique peaks. Each compound is going to take a different amount of time to get through the gas chromatogram. And then each compound, because they're structured different, is going to wind up with different peak heights for the mass spec. So let me do one more for you guys. Let's do amphetamine. So again, let's just look at our big peak here for amphetamine. Again, hard to see, it looks to be about 7.25. So amphetamine's main peak, 7.25 minutes. And then our peak heights, okay, 42, 44. So 42, 44, 91, and 136. And then I would continue doing these for the rest of our drugs. And then the last thing that we want to do, if we scroll all the way down, there's ketamine, our last one. There's methamphetamine. Where is our unknown? Actually, I don't know if we have our unknown on here. Oh, here it is. It's on page four. It's hard to see. So when you get to the unknown, it's on page four. All right. And good luck with this. Um, just double checking a couple of things. Okay, yeah. The unknown definitely is on page four. So analyze the rest of these. I'm going to make a note of that. And good luck with this.